All right, y'all. This is the talk with Nolly. Hey, man. You know, I just been chilling. You know, just been having a positive outlook on life and everything I've been encountering. You know, recently things have been getting a little swifty. I ain't going to lie. It's been getting a little different. You feel me? I just been realistically though. I just been chilling. I just been taking it as it come and just realizing that this is all a part of getting me where I want to get in my life. I am totally not afraid of any challenges that come my way. I just really, really like, you know, just take it one step at a time. Now, as far as my family and whatnot, you know, I'm totally over it. You feel me? I just feel like, you know, I just have to love them for a distance. And if people can't understand or value what you want for your life, regardless who they are, you gotta let it go. You know what I'm saying? And I would be like, for the people who just be watching this and be questioning, like, what's going on in this guy's head? And it's like, um, when you could see something for yourself that nobody else can see, you owe it to yourself to see it through to the end, regardless of the outcome or regardless how other people may view it. And I feel like who I am going to be and who I, where I see myself in the future is going to make up for everything that I've been through. And everything that I've been through is going to contribute to that holistically. So I just really just taking it one step at a time, beef, breath, and everything. But let me tell you all how I had to run away from this cult. After this church, they were trying to make me join their little cult-like motion. Because what the motion was, they didn't want you to actually serve God, per se. They wanted you to serve the church. So if you wasn't giving an offering, you wasn't actually providing some sort of service to the church, you weren't allowed to be there. So I spoke to one of the members at the church and he was like on the golf course is where I got saved. And when I thought that, he said, he heard something, spoke to him and said, oh, why don't you give me that time? Because he was a serious gambler. And he said, he heard a voice say, why you don't give me that time? And then he told me he found the church. So I was like, okay, well, these people really have or are in touch with God, so to speak. If you were able to be on the golf course gambling and you got saved. But come to find out, the pastor was the one that tell him why you don't give me them four hours. And at the same time, while he, with the pastor, he working for the pastor and cleaning the church yard. And then on top of that, I was working with one of the people in the church and he, he was washing cars and you know the first day I washed cars with him wash six or seven cars and make like eighty dollars. That was cool. And then he said, Man, I got some work for you Saturday. He didn't follow through. And on top of that, while he was washing cars, he smoked cigarettes. So I was like, Man, these people are really not people of faith. But at the same time, you can't really judge people. You just gotta let time reveal all truths to you so boom they had a church event and they invited me right now while i was invited to the church event i did cooling and you know i was just telling them, like you know the older women at the table who i was playing cards with that they gorgeous and whatnot and then she, this older woman said you wouldn't know what to do with me and we in the churchyard and you already know when a woman say you don't know what to do with me you know what she wants you to do with her. In front of her husband too. So I like, bro, what really going on? And on top of that, the guy who was trying to get me to join the church, he knew I was homeless. Tell everybody in the church I was homeless. But when I went to the church, they pretend like they didn't know I was homeless. And I like, bro, what you talking about? Like, aren't you people or people of God? And I was like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. Now the, the, the guy who tried to recruit me to the church, he was living in a, the apartment next to the laundry room I was sleeping in. So that's where he met me. And, you know, he would just come off with little gestures, like giving me a banana or something and some water, trying to, like, be friendly. And at the same time, I was like, man, I done been too much, bro. I already see where this is going to go. But at the same time, I can't let past 
experiences prevent me from meeting genuine people or good people. So, you know, I decided to interact with Buddy. And out the gate, Buddy was like, hey, if I didn't have my mom there with me, you know, you would have been inside. I'd have been take you inside, man. And da 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 and I was like, all right, bro, I was an ox and you to stay where you was at. But, you know, I appreciate your kindness. And keep in mind, I never see his mom and his mom was never at the church. So, boom, this man was lying to me out the gate. Bad signs. And on top of that, I told my story to him. And he was just listening to my story to build a connection with me so I could feel like I could trust him. And when I trusted him, he was going to put me in the church to somewhat obviously become a part of what they had going on. And the church had rankings. The high ranking members of the church were black and the lower ranking members of the church were gray. And I was like, why y'all have different colors and stuff? And on the back of the church shirts, for the lower ranking members, they say staff. So I'm like, why does the church have a staff? You feel me? Like, what is going on here? And come to find out, one of the high ranking members who happened to be a female, you know, and was close with the pastor, has a very nice car. And everybody in the church have iffy cars. So something was strange about that church. And I said, I wanted no part of it. And then after I got called by the shelter and I evacuated immediately. Now tell me why the same guy I was washing cars with, he hit me up, say, oh, I have, after I didn't come church that Sunday. So I was supposed to come Sunday so they could see I was serious. Then they was going to begin to initiate me. Right? And before all of this happened, one of the, guys the guys who's trying to get me in the church he actually carried me to a park and said he's going to pray now i thinking he going to pray this nigga just walking around in circles i said what type of prayer is that my guy and then the van he carried me in the van had no windows and it had some wood on the floor and i was like what the hell and when we came from the park i was like what type of prayer this is, bro? Like, in my head. Because when we went to the park, the boy just telling me, sit down and go read while he pray. And he just walk in circles around the park. On top of that, bro, when I come, when we come back from the park, he going to come talk to the pastor. And the pastor looking at me. And, like, they had a conversation about me. And then he come back to the car. And he give me some cards and he say, yeah, go on the street and give these out. I'm like, what the, whoa, what happened? Like, what is going on here? What the hell is going on here? I'm confused. So I escaped them. I didn't go that Sunday because I got accepted by the shelter. And the guy I was washing cars with, he legit say, oh, I got some work for you at 10 o'clock tonight. In no fucking way. Now, buddy, I don't know if you was thinking, given my situation, I was desperate. But that won't stop me from analyzing situations realistically. How the hell you wash cars and you got a job to wash cars at 10 o'clock in the night? Bro, what type of stupidness that is, bro? So all my suspicions about that church was true. They didn't necessarily want you to serve the church to serve God and his overall mission. They want you to serve the church for the church. So I had to escape them. So I, I just end up not joining this cult. And you feel me? It was very rewarding, so to speak. But overall, I just been focusing on myself. I'm here at this homeless shelter. Everybody been cool. I just been staying to myself and focusing on that. Yeah, this is just some place I gotta be for the time being to accomplish what I want to accomplish. You know? Hey man, my life been chill. Look at me. Look at me. I'm feeling great. I'm still fine. Life's fine. 
And recently I was sexually harassed by an older woman. Like, tell me why. All right, it was 420. She invited me over to smoke. We smoke. She ended up cooking for me. And then I thought, you know, I was like, all right, man, you, you, you fine and whatnot. I was trying to smash. And she was like, no, you can't smash and I let it go. But tell me why as time progressed and she finished cooking for me, the woman asked to put her finger in my ass. I say, what do you mean? Like, what are you trying to say? And then she take, she went in her freezer and she went to go get some ice cream and put it in her finger. And then she point directly towards my anus and do a scooping motion. And I say, wow, bro. And at the time, she was living by herself, but her boyfriend would come over periodically. So, given my condition sleeping in the laundry room, I was saying, man, if I was to fuck with shorty, I'd have a place to sleep. You feel me? But at the same time, is it worth giving up my manhood? You feel me? Like, letting a, that woman. her finger in my ass? Do I, I'm not that type of guy. So, it was just like, it was overwhelming. And, you know, I just had to, you know, eat the vicious plate. The food was 10 out of 10. And I just had a go, bro. I just had, I had a dip. I had a dip. And at the shelter, you know, I've been here. I've been minding my business. I'm in a, in a, a therapy, group therapy called Champ, you know. And, you know, it's been quite rewarding. I've been learning about radical acceptance, social support systems. And, you know, I'm working on getting my benefits now. You know, I'm pretty much getting a reboot on my life, you know, but dang, it's so crazy. And I was supposed to come back to church. Tell me why I couldn't come back to church because my family member who was in charge of doing my passport ended up not doing my passport because he didn't like me. And my thing was... If I had just had my documents in the first place, I'd be able to do my own passport and everything would have been okay and I've been home. So I stuck in the States, basically. I really stuck in the States and after that inconvenience, I don't even think I want to go home or deal with anybody in that area. Because if you want me to be realistic, but both Turks people in general, bro, I don't fuck with y'all. Y'all are some weird individuals. Period, bro. I am a T.I., right? By blood. I love my country. You know, I love my people. But y'all individuals, man, y'all both. I'm not going to diss y'all, but y'all just don't meet the standards of high quality human beings in terms of the things you choose to achieve and in terms of the things you choose to engage in on a daily basis. Nothing y'all do make y'all better. Y'all do realize y'all are slaves. Everybody I know work in a hotel for somebody who ain't even from our country. I will be the first to say, y'all not stupid. Okay? Y'all just are victims to capitalism and y'all just really don't know what capitalism is. So y'all just really don't, really don't understand what y'all dealing with. And... None of y'all strive to be wealthy, strive to be financially independent, and it, it's sad. You no, know, I just remain in positive through everything. Just taking deep breaths, understanding that no answer is an answer and no way is a way. And in order to maintain a calm mind and stable form of living, you actually got to find alternative routes that happen to be positive to make your situation better you know and even though majority of what i previously said is negative it's not necessarily from a place of hate or disdain but after realizing people who repeatedly do things not to better themselves it's only right that you be brutally honest with them and that's just my thing
You know what I'm saying? Like right now, where I'm at mentally and where I'm at physically is all about making myself better so I can make the people around me better. And by doing that, I can create the reality where I don't have to say these things. And I don't have to talk down on the people from the place I'm from, so to speak. But realistically, this for any girl in the future, don't ever feel like you could style me because I could dress. Like, don't ever try to disrespect me or violate me or downplay who I am as an individual. Because if you fuck with me, you won't get burned. That's just the type of guy I am. And realistically, knowing that and knowing the extremes I take about certain situations, I tend to take the peaceful route. Because where I take things, people not going to take things. Even recently yesterday, somebody was trying to fight us on the court for a next. And if I wasn't in my calm mind, I would have slapped Buddy. And Flashback. this kid off because he was mad that I scored on him and the game in the bucket was on him and as soon as the game over he punched me in my lip my lip in my brace and I was leaking but I'm bleeding and I'm sexy and I was like bro hold your mask back I'll fade off for y'all this ain't what y'all want in real life American guys they tend to get sensitive especially when you beat them in basketball they be all over the place they real hoes for real sometimes but you know Jack Harlow was with them but I was like bro check your mask it's just a game bro I'm better deal with it and, you know, it's all good in the hood. That's what happened when you ball in the hood, bro. You know, it's whatever. We're vibing. We're vibing. Get on with our day. So, basically. We got the Jack Harlow, say what's up, bro. All right, he lost to me. But it's all right, man. Uh, like, I totally dropped this guy off. And, like, he tried to box me for real. He, like, over there chilling. For real. One through ten. Like, y'all was fighting me one through ten. Like, he, like, totally fucked me up. Bro, he made your ass bleed, Yeah. Disclaimer, he tried to fade me. Police, police, this is a 15-year-old delinquent. He's trying to assault me. This is my disclaimer. So, basically, I went to get some water. Like, nah, you ain't getting no water. You're a hoe. So, basically, doing the blue shorts, gave him the two-piece he ran. Jack Hurley gave the two-piece he ran. Beat the shirt off that guy. Spot a tall, light-skinned guy. He tried to slam me. He was weak. So, I just took that guy's shirt. Jack Harlow ran back, punched me on the side of my face. Then we had to go because police came. And when police came, guess what happened? Guess what happened? This random lady, Loretta, she came and saved me and helped me escape. So I don't get incarcerated. I really appreciate her. She was nice. Got the souvenir. And guess what she was playing in her car, guys? Emo. Hey, shout out Corey and Mia. They was nice. Ah, oh, face holding. Basically, Loretta dropped me home, and I was like, what else did they bring? Let's see. So, checkers. I was totally vibing. Beat up four goofies. Got my banana smoothie, my baconzilla. You know, I'm totally vibing. Hey, man, you a cool dude. Say what's up, Jane. Yo. What you got to say to them women, though? What's good? Ah, what's hit what's my boy up. And indirectly creating the enemy every time I go to the court. So I realize by my actions, I do have consequences, and those consequences can lead to future unpleasant outcomes. And I'm not for that. I'm all about developing myself and being a greater person. You know, I just really want to be positive and focus on what I got going on and my situation at hand, it doesn't affect me because I realize this is not who I am, but this is something that I'm going through to make me who I want to be. 
But from the outside looking in, if you ever feel like you could talk to me or talk down on me, bro, boy, don't ever think that, bro. Don't ever think that, bro. Because two to one, when you see me, you're going to say it. And two to one, you're a lame. So don't ever try this to me, bro. Never in your life, bro. So. Overall, I just been here. I just been taking it easy. I've really just been breathing, enjoying the people around me and the people who genuinely here to help me. I would just like to thank God for everything he has done for me, for making me a peaceful individual and not actually let me live in the things that I feel. Because if I live in the things that I feel, it, as a man, it only leads to chaos. You got to think things through and be logical logical about everything in your life. And remember, remaining calm, you get lead to the best possible outcome for every situation. My whole circumstance was built on people lying to me, people close to me envying my freedom and the way I chose to live my life. So it caused them to directly sabotage and hinder my progress being in America. And I really had to take the L because anything that I would have done or tried to do in a negative light would have ended in me in jail, would have ended in me in prison, somebody hurt, or just an overall bad taste in everybody's mouth. Sometimes you got to learn to lose. I value God, I value every loss I've ever took because it only le led me to self-discovery and understanding that, hey, you just got to let go. It takes more strength to let go than to hold on, especially when you know you're the more competent individual and you have a lot more to lose than those who oppose you. You always have to take the back seat. Always have to take the back seat. Just for a better life and a better outcome in anything you got going on. I am a completely positive guy. But at the same time, just like everybody else, I have things I don't like and I have things that I disdain. You feel me? And it's been a product of the things I've been through and it's been a product of how I grew up and the environment, the various environments I've been in, you know, up until this point, you know, I, I was, I was cool and I was just living my best life and I didn't have a true grounding on how real life could get and life has gotten real for me. I've had people kill, try to kill me. I've had people try to rob me. I've had people try to be my friend for their own benefit. I've had people trying to help me just to help themselves. And not only that, it's just even the previous situation where I was living. This person knew who happened to be my family, knew I was in the States, knew I was on the street the whole time I was here. And the only reason why they took me in because they knew they could get some type of compensation off of my parents for me being there. And the whole time I was there, I was living with roaches. I was cleaning up after the person because they was nasty. And the person was pretending to care about me. And it was just soul aching. Because I'd rather be around true bad intentions than fake good intentions. Remember that. you rather be around true bad intentions over fake good intentions. Because fake good intentions is worse. And then after, I end up doing a favor for a friend, and boom, I end up having to leave because the person who my family member was staying with didn't like it. And I was like, just to avoid any problems, I just really have to go. And that's what led me here. So i glad I took that route because that was not ending good. No way, I was not feeling that vibe at all. Overall, wow. 
Wow. Wow. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Congratulations. Wow. Wow. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Congratulations. Sometimes you just gotta chill. Shout out Ronell. Shout out all them guys in the cub, man. We're vibing. Just cool, bro. But all in all, always remember you have God and do what's best for you at all costs. Even if it defends the people closest to you and it causes you to lose people that you care about, do what's best for you. Because at the end of the day, you have to live with yourself and the things that you choose to tolerate and the outcomes you get from the things you choose to tolerate, whether it be negative or positive. It all falls on you. Everything starts with you. If you make them take the initiative, that's when it gets done. You cannot rely on other people to get things done for you. Yes, you can rely on people's help. Have faith that people will help you. But let me show y'all what this shirt says. Trust nobody, but have faith in many. I got that song, I got that from one. I get it three, six, five, 12 a month, 24, seven. Got this man and I need to get it. And I might not like you, but they don't love it. They just love it how we live, how we live, how we live. They don't love us, they just love it how we live. We maintain a positive attitude, be kind to others. Thank God for every trial you face. Always appreciate the bad in your life because it will only lead you to who you are and what you meant to be and what you meant to have. And you know, when you're in the good, always live in the present moment of the good and enjoy it because at the same time, these things come and go. So always be present in everything and always look at things as something you can grow from, something you can learn from, to overall make you a great individual, a better individual. The true answer and the true key to perfection is accepting your imperfections. Once you accept your imperfections, you're perfect. And the fact that you're able to accept your imperfections, you will offend people who haven't. And once you offend people, just by being your best self, you know you're doing something right. And not only that, you know who to stay away from. And you know what to, what to expect from certain people. And what are the signs. Remember, the signs, bro. People have signs when you meet them. Good signs or bad signs about their true character and true intention when they're dealing with you. Or even just interacting with you in general. So just be patient, Have be patient with yourself, be patient with those around you. I love you, God loves you, be great.